two. So I will briefly discuss one other technique that is also very commonly used. I think for the interest of time, I will directly explain it. I will not derive it. So this is called the split ADC. The idea is even simpler here. So let us say I have an ADC. I have an identical ADC. Let us say I give the same input. If the two ADCs were identical, what can you say about D1 and D2? They will be equal, but in practice there will be mismatch, right? They will not be equal. So then how can I get my final output as? I mean, obviously I can just take D1 or D2, but I am using two ADCs. How can I use the two information to construct the output? I can take an average or the summit, either of them is fine, right? You take the output like this, that is done. Now you want to reduce the mismatch in these two, in these two ADCs. Again, the deal is simple. If the ADCs were matched, D1 and D2 will be same. So the same principle, you take the difference between these two. Now ideally, what do you want this error to be? Zero. I want to make an error signal to be zero. So what can I do? Huh? We, for, for the LMS, we saw something, right? If you want the error signal to go to zero, what do we do? We have to make sure that error is given to an integrator, right? It's, it should be an integrator, something that gives you infinite gain, right? I mean, it's digital, right? It's all digital. Making an integrator is easier there. So you put an integrator, of course, we put some scaling factor or whatever. No, it's a, it's all digital, right? This is all digital. Okay. How do you make an integrator? I mean, you. Ha this is a transfer function. So if I have y by x like this, how do I find y of n? Let's say I write it right. So y into one minus z inverse is x times z inverse. So what is y of n? That's all, right? You just keep adding the input to the old output. That's all. It's just a summer. No, no, that's what this is all digital. And I write it integrator, it's for simplicity. It is an accumulator, it's a digital accumulator. You have this adder here, and then. So now we can do this, right? I take the error signal, give it to an integrator, and go and correct it so that the entire thing is a negative feedback. And the negative feedback will ensure that the two ADCs will be matched. So now the question is how can this be used for correcting the gain error in pipeline ADC? I will just quickly show that. So okay, now I need to draw the pipeline ADC. Yeah, maybe let us say I simplify this. Let us say this is stage 1. This is the residue amplifier given to the second ADC. I take both these guys. I will take the first stage output, second stage output, scale it with the appropriate scaling factor and get D1 here. Similarly on the bottom side I have first stage, the residue amplifier with again G1 he had, goes to second ADC. And you take the first ADC output and second ADC output and reconstruct the final output. So here I use again G1D hat. Fine. Cool. So now if I look at the uh, sequence D1, I will have the input plus let us say the quantization noise by G1D plus Q1 into 1 minus G1A by G1D. Similarly, D2 will be same. Get some space here. Q2 hat by G1 D hat plus Q1 hat. It's all assumed, right? DAC is all there. I'm not drawing it. I mean, it's okay. You know how to make, right? So you can make it. Fine. So now, if I take uh, D1 minus D2, remember that is what is the error, right? So I will erase all these. 
Yeah. If I find d1 minus d2, what do I get? The input gets cancelled. So I'll not write q2 term because q2 term is something that you want, right? I'll just write only the error terms. So I'll have q1 into 1 minus g1a by g1d. So now let us say uh, q1 and q1 hat, they are not same, they are sort of independent. Okay. Then the only way for this error signal to go to 0, or what is the only way for this entire thing to go to 0? Independently both of them must go to 0. So which means this will get corrected, this will get corrected. But here we have made one crucial assumption, which is these two guys are different. But if you use the same ADC and give the same input, it can so happen that both quantization noise can be correlated, they can be similar, which means let us say q1 is same as q1 hat. And if this ratio is same as this ratio, this error will go to 0. Right? That can easily happen, right? For example, I can have q1 to be equal to q1 hat. I can have g1a to be equal to g1a hat. In that case, if I use the same uh, digital gain for these two, then also error goes to 0. But that, that doesn't mean the mismatch is cancelled. So the crucial thing is to somehow make sure that these two guys are not same. So again, couple of things that can be done. So one thing that is commonly done is go and add a small offset voltage here, a very small offset voltage. Then what will happen? The signal that the first ADC in the top branch sees is different from the signal seen by the first ADC in the bottom branch. So which means the quantization noise generated will be different. But in this case, again, your input amplitude must be smaller to accommodate for this. The other thing is same thing to play with the comparator thresholds. So I'll erase this or yeah, I'll show here. Let us say the first ADC in the top branch has this thresholds. You can again go and change the thresholds for the bottom comparator and um, for the bottom ADC. Intentionally change the comparator thresholds. And once again, since we have redundancy in this gain here, we know that even if you make an error in the comparator thresholds, we will be fine. So we make a tolerable error for the comparator thresholds. If you do this, even for the same input, the quantization noise of this guy and this guy will be different. Is that okay? I am giving the same input, but for the first ADC in the top branch, I have the correct quantizer characteristics. For the first ADC in the bottom branch, I use a shifted characteristics here. So which means the quantization noise for the same input will be different and that way you can keep these guys different. And if I do this, the only way for this term to go to 0 is when this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So once again you do the same thing, you put an integrator and uh, change the digital gain here. Cool. And again this uh, split ADC is a very generic principle. It can be used for making sure any two ADCs are matched. Because that is what it is doing in principle, right? It is taking two different ADCs, which are supposedly identical, and trying to make them matched. So, do you guys uh, remember any other scenario where we used multiple ADCs? No. What is it? No, no. What is it called? Time interleaving, right? So, in, even in time interleaving, we had multiple ADCs. So, let's say I just take two of them. See here again, ideally we give the same input, but the sampling instance are staggered for the two ADCs. So here the ADCs can have mismatches. Again, you can use the split ADC concept, right? So let us say this guy has a offset VOS1. This guy is adding a different offset. Ideally, you want these offsets to be same in the two branches. So one thing you can do is the same. You take these guys. First, I have to find the offset in the ADC output. So for that, I'll uh, take the average here. If I take the average, I'll get the offset. And then I'll use the same concept. Take the error, give it to an integrator with some scaling factor or whatever. And what should I do? 
To correct for the offset here, what should I do? I mean, let us say if this is VOS2, if I want it, if I want the overall offset here to be equal to VOS1, what can I do? No, no, see, I mean, forget about this loop itself, right? In principle, what will you do? This is, let us say, a secondary now. If I give you all the freedom in the world, I want to make sure that the offset, I let us say I even know this is VOS1, the offset here is VOS2. To make sure the offset mismatch is cancelled, what can I do? The output here is, let us say, y plus VOS1. I'll ignore the quantization noise, okay? That's fine. Here it is y plus VOS2. I want these two signals to be same. Divide by VOS2, divide by VOS2. So divide by VOS2, what will happen? No, I am telling you in simpler, right? I know what is VOS1 and VOS2. I know the exact values of VOS1 and VOS2. So, what should I do? I mean, it's pretty simple, right? I am telling you, I have two outputs y plus VOS1, y plus VOS2. In the down one, add VOS1 minus VOS2. That's all, right? So, here also I will do uh, digitally, I will add a number here that will correct for this offset. So, now if I have this, now I, the point is this is fine if I know what is VOS1 and VOS2. In practice, I will not know. I have to do it automatically. So, I will use this loop. Okay. So, this will make sure that the error here is 0 and it will add an appropriate offset here to keep the error 0 and the error is basically the difference in the offset. Now, I mean same thing you can do for tackling gain error also. For example, see let us say these two ADCs have different gains, right? Let us say this has a gain of k1, this has a gain of k2. Again to correct for this gain error, what will you do? Let us say this calibration is not there. And once again, let us say you know the values of k1 and k2. How can you correct for it? Yeah, you know k1 value and k2 value. Yeah. How can I correct for it? Gain, gain mismatch. Ah. Here it will be k1 v1, sorry k1 times y, k2 times y. I want these two to be same. What can I do? I will put a scaling factor here and change it. So that is what I have to do here. So here I should not be computing the average, I should be computing the uh, RMS value or let us say the power. The power will give the value of k1 square, right? And this will give k2 square and then you can go and pick the game. So this quick ADC is a very generic technique where you can take one of these guys as a reference path and try to match all the other paths to the same path. Cool. So, this is about uh, calibration principles and I mean one thing to note about calibration is that see uh, this entire calibration loop whatever here or whatever we saw they need not be run at the full they need not be run at the same rate as the ADC because the variations in the environment are going to be really slow right. So, you do not need to run this thing at the same speed as the ADC you can run it at a much slower speed. For example, here uh, whatever we are doing, right? Where is it? So here, let us say we are computing this correlation. I don't have to take every sample and compute the correlation. I can skip some ten samples. Let us say if this is running at the ADC is running at hundred megahertz, I can make sure the calibration engine runs at ten times lower frequency. That is also fine because it's going to run in the background and keep tracking it continuously even if it's a bit slower it is okay this is basically done to save power okay and although i showed this calibration for gain mismatch in pipeline adc the same thing will work for dac mismatch or anything the principles is same either you use a dicta sequence 
and try to find the correlation and correct for it or you have a split adc structure where you have a reference path and try to match all the other branches to this branch this is all general principles